Colossians goes on in verse 17, says, He is before all things, and by him all things consist. And that's a strange term, consist. Sunisteme, to be compacted together, to cohere, to be constituted with, to be held together. All things are held together would be perhaps a better translation there. You see, most of us understand there, if you have any physics at all, you know there's four basic forces. and There's gravity, which keeps our feet on the ground and keeps the earth in orbit and what have you. Electromagnetic, like radio waves, light, and molecules of chemistry and so forth. The strong, then two nuclear forces, a strong nuclear force that holds the atom together, a weak nuclear force that generates radioactivity and the heat of the sun and that sort of thing, presumably. Well, the nucleus of every atom is held together by what physicists call the weak and the strong forces. The nucleus of the atom contains positively charged and neutral particles, to use a simplistic model. Notice that the nucleus is, consists of neutral and positive uh, uh, charges. The mutual electrostatic repulsion between positrons should drive the nucleus apart if it were not for the strong nuclear force which binds the nucleus together. In other words, you all know that positive and negative charges attract each other. No surprise. Two, two uh, uh, particles of the same kind, either positive or negative, repel each other. Are we together? Okay, so we have a nucleus of an atom that consists of all positive things surrounded by uh, energy levels of electrons. But everything in the center of this is, should be flying apart because they're positive charges that repel each other. That's being held together. What happens when that isn't held together? Well, you know what happens. That releases energy that's unimaginable. Now, they've discovered that the zero point energy, there's an active force imposed upon the universe which actively holds the very atoms of the material world together moment by moment, day by day, century by century. Similarly, accelerated electrons circling the nucleus would quickly radiate all their energy away and fall into the nucleus unless there exists an invisible energy source to counteract this. And that's what they call the zero point energy. And it's the energy, if you will, of what we think of as empty space. It's not empty space. It has impedance. It has a whole bunch of properties that are measurable. And that's exactly what the Bible says, but that's a whole other study. But we, the atoms appear to behave in perpetual motion machines, picking up energy from the background, zero-point energy, and are thus sustained by it. And that, that's been estimated by experts to be enormously high levels of energy. Other New Testament passages deal with the density of the atomic engine physics. Hebrews 1 and 2 Peter 3 deals with these issues, interestingly enough. And uh, take a quick look at it. In Hebrews chapter 1, hath in these days spoken to unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom he made the worlds. And uh, the, world, the word worlds there, Ionis, is plural. It means time domains, interestingly enough. And some Bibles say ages, but it's generally regarded to mean the entire creation. But, and Jesus, of course, is the creator itself. But you get to the next verse. Who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had himself purged our sins and sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. The express image of his person. And there again, it's the, it's, it's the express character, like a steel engraving, if you will. And uh, all the prophets and all the writings up till now have all been but shadows and hints at the aspects of Jesus Christ but he's the embodiment of them. And he walked this earth that we might know. Upholding all things by what? The word of his power. And there is a day he's going to say enough already. And this all uh, enumerates the same three facts in the same order as here. The word for upholding is the very same word as in the Septuagint is used when it speaks of the Spirit of God moving on the face of the waters in the second verse of Genesis. He brooded, he moved, and, and so forth. And he had by himself purged our sins, and that is what we had in, so eloquently expressed in uh, Ron Madsen's presentations. The Greek Aris participle is here completed. It is done. It is finished, as Jesus himself declared from the cross, to tell us die, paid in full. Well, Hebrews points out that the Son is the final revealer. He's the heir of all things. He's the Son. Through the Son, the ages were made. 
He's the brightness of God's glory. He's the image of the Father. He upholds all things by His power. He made purification of sin. This is the one that we're dealing with. And He sat down on majesty on high. Praise God. Thank you.